In this episode of Cardioid, we'll be talking about contrast associated acute kidney injury. Contrast associated acute kidney injury is defined as development of acute kidney injury following contrast media administration in the absence of an alternative etiology. The KDGO definition for this has been given as an increase in serum creatinine level by more than equal to 0.3 mg per deciliter within 48 hours after contrast media exposure or an increase to more than equal to 50% within 7 days. Overall, the incidence of contrast-induced acute kidney injury in the general population is 0.6 to 2%. The incidence of contrast-induced acute kidney injury in patients undergoing percutaneous interventions is 3.3 to 14.5%. The prevalence is higher in the patients who are undergoing coronary angiography and PCI due to higher contrast volumes used during the procedures and the types of patients treated as they usually have multiple comorbidities. Contrast associated acute kidney injury is the third most common cause of hospital, hospital acquired acute renal failure. There are multiple risk factors for contrast induced nephropathy. These are modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. The four most important risk factors associated with contrast-induced nephropathy include chronic kidney disease, diabetes mellitus, hemodynamic instability, contrast type and contrast volume. Risk scoring for contrast-induced nephropathy. There are multiple risk scores which are available for contrast-induced nephropathy. Mehran's risk score is the most validated score which is used for contrast-induced nephropathy. In this score, the use of IABP, congestive cardiac failure, age more than 75 years, presence of anemia, diabetes, contrast media volume, and baseline serum creatinine are used for scoring the patients to know the risk for contrast-induced nephropathy. Higher the score, higher would be the risk of contrast-induced nephropathy and higher would be the risk of dialysis. Natural history of contrast-induced nephropathy. Most cases of contrast-induced acute kidney injury are self-limiting. Serum creatinine returns to baseline levels in 1-2 to two weeks. There are short-term complications and long-term complications which can be seen in patients who undergo contrast administration. The short-term complications of contrast-induced nephropathy include prolonged hospital stay, increased cost and increase in hospital mortality. Whereas the long-term complications include precipitation of CVT progression, significantly higher mortality at one year, and higher rates of MI, stent thrombosis, target lesion revascularization, and major bleeding after the procedure. So what are the mechanisms of contrast-induced nephropathy? So this has been taken from an article in JAK. This was a state of the article published in 2019. What they said was contrast media has got its uh, direct toxic effect and it has got some indirect effect. The direct toxic effect is on tubular cells and uh, the indirect effect is because of the vasoconstriction. The vasoconstriction leads to the ischemia of the renal medulla and generation of reactive oxygen species. Additional mechanisms of injury include embolization of atheromatous debris. So what are the measures to decrease the contrast induced nephropathy? They can be pre-procedural interventions and they can be inter-procedural interventions which can be done for prevention of contrast-induced nephropathy. So the pre-procedural interventions include IV hydration, use of potent statins, stopping nephrotoxic drugs. The intra-procedural interventions can include radial access, use of appropriate contrast media, contrast sparing strategies, use of uh, coronary physiology based uh, interventions, use of IVUS and dextron based OCT. Hydration. So, how does hydration help in patients who are at risk of contrast-induced nephropathy? So, increased GFR leads to decreased contrast concentration in the field rate. There is decreased oxidative stress. There is decreased endogenous vasoconstrictor production. And there is decreased oxygen consumption in the medulla due to decreased need of sodium reabsorption. So, for hospitalized patients, it is recommended that volume expansion should begin 6 hours before the procedure and should be continued for 6 to 24 hours post-procedure. 
and for outpatient it is recommended that fluid should be initiated 3 hours before and should be continued 12 hours after the procedure post procedural volume expansion is more important than pre procedural hydration how much volume to give so it has been recommended that isotonic crystalloids should be given in the dose of 1 to 1.5 ml per kg per hour so preserve trial came out in 2017 18 and it was published in new england journal of medicine and it had shown that anestyl cysteine is not superior to placebo and soda bicarb has got no advantage over normal saline how does choice of vascular axis affect contrast induced nephropathy in the aki sub study of the matrix trial it was found that in acs patients who underwent invasive management radial axis was associated with reduced risk of acute kidney injury compared with femoral axis how does this happen this is because radial axis is associated with lower rates of major bleeding and there is lower chance there are lower chances of hemodynamic instability during the pci and radial axis can decrease atheroma embolization to the renal arteries as there is no manipulation of the abdominal aorta intravascular imaging or zero or ultra low volume contrast pci can ios guidance decrease the use of iodinated contrast in pci this question was answered by the mozart trial and they found that they found that ios guided pci required lesser amount of total contrast volume as compared to angiography guided pci and it did not come at increased cost of in hospital complications or complications 4 months after post discharge so what they recommended was the thoughtful and extensive use of ivas as primary imaging tool to guide pci is safe and it markedly reduces the volume of iodine contrast compared with angiography alone guidance the use of ivas should be considered for patients at high risk of contrast associated aki or volume overload undergoing coronary angioplasty how can we use the ivas to minimize the use of contrast so for this ivas should be the main modality for planning the pci and not coronary angiography short non calcified non severely obstructive lesion should undergo direct stenting otherwise lesion preparation should be done the result of the lesion preparation should be assessed by ivas and not angiography stent sizing that is a stent diameter and stent length should be decided by ivas and not angiography result of stent implantation should be assessed by ivas and not angiography incomplete apposition which may require post dilatation and need for additional stenting as well as the size of the second stent should be determined by the ivas and not coronary angiography if there is high confidence in the final results final angio check shot should not be taken and results final results should be assessed by ivas and if there is high confidence of final results final check shot should not be taken oct so oct has got the advantage of superior resolution and better definition of structures like calcium however it requires periodic flushing using the contrast media the feasibility of performing oct using an alternative agent has been studied low molecular weight dextrin has been tried for this purpose this was a study which was published in 2013 and uh, there has been some data on this dextrin based low uh, low molecular weight uh, dextrin based oct and uh, studies have said that image quality and measurements from dextrin based oct are similar to that obtained from conventional oct the point to be noted here is dextrin although it is not nephrotoxic it can induce aki if it is used in very large amounts which is very unusual the side effects of dextrin may include anaphylactic reactions and coagulopathy hemodynamic support 
So we already know that hemodynamic instability is one of the prime factors responsible for precipitation of acute kidney injury which can be labeled as contrast-induced nephropathy. Impella can significantly reduce the transient hypotensive episodes that are deleterious for kidney perfusion and which can trigger AKI. So this study was published in circulation in 2017 and it tried to answer the question can Impella protect against acute kidney injury in patients undergoing high risk PCI and they found that incidence of AKI in high risk PCI patients was lower if Impella was used. Choice of contrast media. So currently we are not using high osmolality contrast media. We are presently using low osmolality and isosmolality contrast media. So these are the uh, types of contrast which are recommended by European Society of Cardiology and American College of Cardiology. What are the contrast sparing strategies which can be used in PCI? So we should use 5 French catheters with no side holes for coronary angiography. Previous angiogram if available should be used with, uh, on the cath lab monitors. Biplane angiography is better. The volume of contrast per injection should be limited. Ideal is around 2 ml per injection. Diluted contrast media can be used. Test injections should be avoided. Stent enhancement techniques should be encouraged such as stent boost, clear stent, higher acquisition rate, improve uh, image quality. Contrast elimination from the guide should be allowed. Additional guide wires for road mapping or dedicated softwares for the same purpose can be used. Extensive use of intracoronary imaging or coronary physiology can be used. Coronary sinus aspiration. So coronary sinus aspiration during coronary angiography can remove one third of the additional contrast which is given. With each contrast injection, coronary sinus aspiration can be done using a 20 ml syringe with continued fluoroscopy and this can remove more than one third of the total given contrast and it can decrease the risk of contrast induced nephropathy in high risk patients. Remote ischemic preconditioning. So there are small data which have suggested that this might be of some benefit. Uh, there are possible mechanisms which have been suggested. The possible mechanisms include increasing circulating bradykinins, nitric oxide and erythropoietin. Uh, the new thing which we should be knowing is divert system. Divert system, uh, divert system reduces the contrast delivered to the patient without decreasing the image quality. It minimizes the excessive reflux which is going into the aorta. It can seemingly integrate into our uh, manifolds and uh, we can have a fair idea about the total contrast volume delivered we can have an idea about contrast volume per injection which we are delivering. Percentage contrast safe per injection can be known and contrast level remaining until threshold max is achieved can be accurately determined using this system. It, the company claims that it consistently reduces contrast deli delivered to the patient by 40%. Renal guard system. The renal guard system is basically meant to maintain a ur high urine flow rate more than 150 ml per hour. Renal guard system is meant to basically maintain a very high urine flow rate which can decrease the exposure of nephrons to the contrast media. In a study which was published way back in 90s it was found if the mean urine flow rate is more than 150 ml per hour there are very low chances of the patient requiring dialysis. Renal guard system allows maximization of IV hydration by matching the infused volume to patient's urine output. One hour before the procedure, IV isotonic saline and a dose of furosemide is administered if a urine output of 300 ml per hour is achieved, PCI is started. Matched hydration is continued for 4 hours after PCI. 
we have data to suggest that this modality is safe and efficacious. The remedial 2 trial found that renal guard therapy is superior to sodium bicarbonate and NH trial cysteine in preventing contrast associated acute kidney injury in high risk patients. The remedial 3 trial found that a urine flow rate guided strategy using the renal guard system is superior to LVEDP guided strategy based on IV hydration in reducing contrast induced acute kidney injury. This was about the uh, contrast induced nephropathy and uh, we'll meet again in the next episode of Cardioid. Thank you.